We make no apologies for being back at Philip Hoch again this week. Selkirk against Hoik, the big match in Premier One. Selkirk trying to protect that unbeaten home record which stretches back to September the 1st, 2007, while Hoik, languishing at the very bottom of Premier One, were desperate to get some points. Welcome to Borders Rugby Roundup and Selkirk were trying to put the record straight after that hiding that they took at Mansfield Park earlier in the season. A packed Philip Hall crowd watched the drama unfold. There was an early pitch inspection but the game went ahead, both teams knowing that this was such a vital clash for different reasons. As expected, a bumper crowd came out, hundreds making the journey up the A7 from Hoik to join the huge home support, swelling the attendance to around 1,500. And despite the atrocious conditions with torrential rain and a very heavy pitch, it was clear that this game was not for the faint-hearted. Hoik welcomed back Rory Hutton and Graham Hogg from International Sevens duty, while Selkirk were without Scott Hendry, Scott Tomlinson and David Cassidy, and all was set for an entertaining Borders derby under the watchful eye of Ian Hurd. First blood went to Hoik, Craig Nee slotting an early penalty, but it wasn't too long before Selkirk found their way into green territory. They didn't manage a pushover try, but when they won a penalty, Martin Murray decided to take the quick tap and go, and Selkirk's forwards piled in to try and suck in the Hoyt defence. Scrum half Michael McVie delivered quick ball to Gavin Craig, who darted past Graham Hogg to go in for his sixth try of the season and put Selkirk in front, with McVie converting. And it wasn't too long before the suitors doubled their score, taking advantage of a combination of generous Hoyt defence, quick hands, good support and Lee Jones' blistering pace. And with McVie converting again, it was 14-3. Hoyt were getting plenty of territory in possession, but they couldn't turn it into points. Often the wrong option would be taken, like this chip from Graham Hogg, which landed in the worst possible place, the arms of Selkirk fullback Fraser Harkness. And everyone knows what he's capable of, even from deep inside his own half. A long kick ahead and a chase to the ball, there was only ever going to be one winner. By now Selkirk were eyeing up that bonus point which they knew would take them back into second in the table where they are comfortably beating Heriots at Mill Bray. And they never gave up trying even though the greens were proving to be difficult to break down. One final move in injury time tempted Harkness into the line and a dummy move from Ross Armstrong did enough to give him a way through and with John Coates to beat slipped it inside to Jones who finished things off. McVie's fourth conversion made it 28-3 and Selkirk had erased the memory of Mansfield Park to protect their incredible home record once again. Yeah, I'm disappointed, Stuart, but um, can't fault the effort the players. I thought they, they gave 110%, but weren't good enough in the day and Selkirk played well, defended really well. I thought we had 70% maybe of the game, but they had four chances, took four chances. and Hey, they're a good side, good side. I thought he controlled the game very, very well, Stuart. I thought uh, Mike McVie and Ross Armstrong were outstanding today. Mike was kicking, box kicks and that were really good. And the commitment again of the players was unreal. Kind of wasn't the best conditions, I mean, they say, but uh, the boys stuck in and kind of played quite well, I think. He kind of got the five five points, it's a big thing, I think. Next week's a must win. If we don't win, win next week, I think it could be curtain, Stuart, although there's still about another seven or eight games to go. But I thought today maybe a turning point, get a win today and then win next week and then we're back in the hunt. But as I say, all credit to Selkirk, a good side and disappointed. Staying in Premier One now and at Megatland on Sunday, Melrose took on Champions Borough Muir. Athol Innes reports. Melrose will be hoping that the BBC Albert Channel does not show a repeat of the Sunday afternoon fair. On a heavy pitch watched by a reasonable crowd, Melrose were physically outgunned and outmuscled to leave their hopes of a top three finish in the balance. Melrose points came from a Johnny Bradburn try from penalties from Scott White and Jordan Macy. Melrose's hopes of salvaging even a losing bonus point went when John Deere was yellow carded for trying to block a quick tap penalty. So Melrose remained fifth in the championship, final score at Megaland, Barrymore 26, Melrose 11. 
In Premier 2 now, and Gala were looking to bounce back after three defeats. They were at home at Netherdale, taking on Haddington. Link Spears saw this one. Two mistakes cost Gala this game at Netherdale. They'd been leading 6-0, but in the second half, a charge down kick and a breakdown of a passing move led to two tries for Haddington. But on the whole, Haddington thoroughly deserved their win. They'd missed four penalties. Gala were a bit out of sorts. They were young, they were inexperienced, and it showed up against a fairly streetwise side which took their chances well and which deserved what was only their second win in 15 matches against Gala. There was a tasty looking match at Inverleith, Stuart's Melville playing host to Jed Forrest. Jed Forrest in third place, Stuart's Melville in second. So something was going to give. Here's Bill Paulson. The writing was on the wall for Jed Forrest by the end of the first quarter at Inverleith. Stuart's Melville monopolised early possession and scored two well-made tries through scrum half Rob Patterson and number eight Stuart Clark. When Jed did attack with ball in hand, a pass was dropped and home wing Jed Gordon hacked and chased from his own 22 to score an unconverted try. Moving into the second half, the home bonus point was gained when Clark charged over for his second try, which Wood converted. Jed took advantage of Clark's sin binning when Scott Laidlaw scored a pushover try, but Stuart Kerr added a fortunate fifth try for the home side and Wood again kicked the conversion. Jed ended the scoring when Laidlaw went over in the corner for his second try following good handling. Seb Trotter's touchline conversion made the final score. Stuart Melville 33, Jed Forrest 12. We've had a bad day from start to finish. Our bus was late and we certainly didn't turn up on time at the, at the game today. We lost two tries in the first ten minutes. It went from bad to worse. The boys were found wanting today. We're going to have to regroup and look for some serious improvements over the next few weeks. Peebles scored 35 points at Musselburgh but still lost out by two, although they did get a try and a losing bonus point. They scored four tries, including these from Duncan MacDonald and David Anderson, with Dan Boltwood getting a personal tally of 20. Meanwhile, Kelso lost 15-13 at home to GHA after conceding a try and conversion in injury time. Kevin Utterson got all of Kelso's points, taking him over 100 for the season. The table sees Peebles move up to third, overtaking Jed Forrest. Next week, Kelso are at home to Stu Mel, while Peebles welcome leaders Dundee to the Geits. In National League One, Langham and Berwick had their games postponed again, but Hoyt YM beat Kilmarnock 32-7, getting a try bonus for the first time this season. In East Leagues 1 and 2, all local teams won, except for Walkerburn, who leaked 77 points at home to St Boswells, who now top the table. Next week's cup and plate matches are on your screen now with four local derbies. Just before we go, here's the state of play in the Borders rugby rankings. Hoyt YM are still the most successful Borders team with 54 points. Selkirk have scored most tries from all the core local sides with 39 of them from Melrose and Jed in joint second. As for the best points difference, well Hoyt YM are still in front with Langham second and Peebles third. On to the individual performances, and there's a three-way tie in the top try scorers list. Jordan Macy, Mike Tate and Stephen Nicholl all on seven, while Dan Botwood still leads the way in the top points table. Well, that's it for this week. Next Saturday is the last Saturday before Christmas, and we'll be at the Geits for the Peebles match against Dundee High School FP. Join us then.